Shore. Shore, like the beach. Like the beach. All right. Okay, so you don't, you don't have it? No. All right. Now, part of it is that was probably available to you. Uh, it's, it's rare that a defendant, uh, the defendant cannot testify before the grand jury unless they make a request. Did you participate in helping him make a request? He did make a request. Okay. So, and then the grand jury said, fine, we want to hear from him. So, now that tape would probably, now, would the tape have been available to you? I don't know. There's so many secrecy provisions, I'm not sure. I would think that it would have been available to you. So, you probably could have got it. No, I think he could have, Judge, but, but let, me, let me just turn in in terms of the grand jury tape. The grand jury tape basically establishes that he threw the first punch. Which he already that, has. He which he's already it. testified to. So the grand, I don't think the grand jury tape is going to be an All issue right. here. Well, let's do this. Which ones do you think would be an issue? Well, Judge, I think the affidavit, it looks like the... Yeah, so the which uh, affidavit is I'm that? I'm sorry. This is the affidavit that he filed with federal court. I'm, I'm assuming that was, let me see. Is that, that like a verified also. petition? So it's a verified complaint kind of a thing? It's his first amended complaint. Let me see if. Uh... Runner, I don't believe that was verified. All right, you don't believe it was verified? Well, the amended complaint is not verified. And let me, let me just see here, Judge. Right, well, the, the original complaint wasn't either. I drafted those. All right. So uh, Mr. Shore says that that's not a verified complaint. That's not a sworn statement. Those are, those are statements made by the lawyer okay. based on the representations, his knowledge that he knew, having discussed the case. So okay. that one's probably not relevant. All right, so what else you got? All right, give me just a second, Judge, because there, there's, at one point, he, he has two separate statements about who punched him. He does not identify that it was Cassie that actually punched him. And then later in, in the stand, I'm just trying to determine whether, those, whether that was a sworn statement. I'm seeing in his response to his interrogatory, he does identify Detective Cassie as the one that punched him. And let me just go back here. Right. That's Mr. As, as to who, who punched him and when the punch was being thrown, I don't think that's relevant to this case because they're not on trial. He's on trial right now. It might be relevant in a civil case, but... I think it's, I think the evidence is sort of unequivocal. I think the evidence is all that the defendant threw the first punch, the defendant threw the punch while the police officer was, was getting out of the car or still in the car, right there at the car, not on his feet. I think it's unequivocal. I don't know why we're arguing about that. I don't know why we need to establish that because it's already established. I mean, that's what the defendant has admitted to. That's what the police officers testified to. So it's, you know, that's not particularly helpful. I don't think. And again, I don't want to tell you how to try your case, but that would be sort of duplicative. We don't need to, if he's already admitted it, he said that's what happened, we don't have to prove that again. It doesn't help us much. So I'm gonna say that that's probably uh, okay. inadmissible. L let's get to, okay, so I, that may have, does that run us through our affidavits? No, it statements? doesn't, Judge, because he, he, he talks about, I mean, he's, He's inconsistent with whether he knew there was one person in the car or two people in the car. And I think that is more probative of the fact that he knew that he was dealing with police officers. And I think it, 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 it sort of suggests that his testimony is a little bit incredible, uh, you know, in reference to that. Because, I, because all this is, you know, part, part of the resistant arrest is going to turn on whether he thought that they were police officers. The evidence at this point is that they were in plain clothes. There is an exhibit with Detective Browning with a badge around his neck once he comes out of the car and the fray doesn't stop. Okay? Um, so, you know, I, 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 I guess our position is that based on all of these sworn statements that he has given, he referenced they, 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 prior to any of this even happening, they, they pulled over, they did this, they did that. Um, and all of this is under oath, Judge, and I think that's probative of the fact that he knew that there were more than one people in the car. And then at one point he says, well, you know, I didn't know it was more than one person in the car. Okay, and again, yes, Mr. Stegman. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Judge, I, I didn't mean to that's interrupt okay. you. I, I was just, I don't know how the number of people in a car is relevant to him knowing who are policemen. Other people travel in pairs. I mean, it's, I, I don't, well, I just don't. 
Mr. Shore, you got something? I would there? also advise that those inter the answers to the interrogatories were made after the fact, after he was aware of everything. He knew, obviously, when he answered that there were multiple people in the car, because he learned during the events that there were multiple people in the car. He testified but, that he saw someone come around. He testified that he at first only saw one person. I'm not saying he was tackled by the second person. The second person tackled him and Officer Cassie, which is what Cassie testified, which oh, is Judge, his testimony is that nor did their appearance, nor did their voices indicate that they were police. In this sworn statement, he's referring to their voices that came out of the voice that came out of that car, which he's testifying it was only one person in that car at the time. That I, that's the only person I saw. I mean, of course, I think it goes to the fact that he thought he was accosting a, a little guy. Uh, you know, but it, but it, but 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 here it clearly says in these and and these are sworn. I mean, my understanding is that these are, these the interrogatories, these answers to interrogatories were sworn, where he says they didn't have any sirens, nor did their car, nor did their appearance, nor did their voices indicate that they were police. Well, and I think that's kind of what he's already testified to. And if there's a discrepancy, and here's what's happened. Okay, and again, well. Part of it is, what do you, what, what's, what help is that to you, Mr. Price? I don't really understand how that necessarily is going to help you. Because what the testimony is, I think, from the defendant was, it was unclear to him that they were police even after they identified, or that Cassie certainly identified. And at some point in time, Browning identified or started saying, police, police, police. He says, Anybody can say police, police, police. That doesn't help me. And I couldn't find any indicators on them. There were no badges. There was no shirt that said police or whatever. So there was none of that. So I don't know, you know, what we get for all of that. What, 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 what does anybody get for all that? Judge, what we get is a contradiction of an individual who's studying to be a history and a social studies teacher, et cetera, et cetera, all this stuff that he just fed the jury, when in fact he is this person based on all of this information that he has provided either on the internet or in sworn testimony is somebody who hates the police. We're not, we're, not, we're not into the hate and the police just yet. But we're not, what we're on to right here is this affidavit. We can get to the hate police and some of the blogging things in, in a minute. But I want to go through these one at a time and I don't want to get them all confused. I'm just saying that that sworn statement I don't think differs at all with what the defendant testified to. It just doesn't differ. And if it doesn't differ, it's not, not important, it's irrelevant. It's just, you know, duplicitous. And it's just because I don't think there's a significant difference in that. And as a matter of fact, I think the defendant's testimony is a probably a little bit more uh, sort of uh, incriminating than the affidavit. I didn't believe them when they said police, police, police. All, and I looked for some indicators. I wanted to see something that was a evidence that they were in fact police. That's probably more incriminating than what you have there, and it doesn't help us to introduce that. And it also sort of introduces something that, you know, what I'm trying to do is conduct a nice, clean, fair trial without a lot of things that we don't need, and it are, can only be useful for error. All right, now let's get into the, the, the ones that are going to be more. Are you have another sworn statement anywhere? I was just checking that, Judge. All right. Just, uh, Okay, so let me, let me just make sure I'm clear. So is it the court's position that this statement that it was Officer Cassie that said, get the fuck out of the road, it was the driver, I thought it was only one person in the car, in light of all the other sworn statements where he refers to them as two people and their voices, et cetera, et cetera? I don't think it helps us much. Okay. Because I think that that's pretty much what the defendant said. When I approached the car, I just thought, it, he says something like, I thought it was just some neighborhood thugs who were just being ridiculous and I was going to stand up for myself. And I don't know if he said, you know, so it's one and he rushes up and punches the guy and then the next thing you know, he's in a scuffle with that guy 
and then the second person tackles him and Officer Cassie, and then that's what happens. So I don't know what you get for that. I mean, I don't know what, you know, okay, is, is it different? Yeah, but it's not, you know, really uh, appreciative. I mean, it's not a well, huge I mean, you difference. know, Judge, since they're judging the credibility, because that's really what it's going to come down to, whether they believe him or whether they believe the police officers. Um, All right. If you, okay, now let's do this. All right, Mr. Price, if you're bound and determined to do it, uh, you can introduce that question. You, you're going to have to lay a foundation, and you're going to have to be very specific about it. We're not going to wander around. Okay, so the sort of the point is this. Now, in this case, uh, during the course of this entire problem that you've had here with the LMPD, did you prepare an affidavit? Now, or I guess you're going to have to say, when you approach the car, how many people did you believe were in the car? Right? Then he's going to say, if he says one, does that eliminate your concern? And then he says, sometime thereafter, after I learned that there were two. So there's where we are. And I don't know. You're going to have to ask. I'll allow, you, I'll allow you to ask him some questions, but I do not want to spend a whole lot of time with it because I don't believe it's particularly significant. Okay. And I think he may admit it. He may admit everything that you want him to admit. Okay. That would be great. All right. You have any more affidavits? No, I think that's all the affidavits. Okay, let's get into the sensational stuff then, the blogs and so forth. And I need to classify them. I need to know if there are comments before or after the incident. So we're going to talk about them in groups. Are there, is there any of these blogs or I don't even know what they are, videos, I don't know what they are, that okay. occurred prior to the incident? No, the only one that's, Judge, the, there's a couple of things that occurred prior to the incident. There's the website that talks about how to survive when you encounter the police, okay? Mm -hmm. And then there is, uh, which I think the court has commented on earlier, there is his attack on a police officer in Warsaw, not a, not a physical attack in terms of criminal, but an attack where he goes before the city council and he's saying this police, you know, this, this uh, uh, police officer has to go because of one, two, three, four, five. I think that establishes, Judge, a pattern of his state of mind towards police just in general. Okay, let's talk about the first one. How to survive a, what is it, a, a police what? It is. Uh, how to survive a police. How to survive an encounter with the police officer. Okay. And he posts this on his website, and this was roughly about two years ago. Uh, I, I want to say in 2010, when he was running for office in, in I want to say in Warsaw, or Somewhere. maybe running for Somewhere. state legislature, something. All right. And he had all these Kentucky resolutions. Resolution F was a resolution is to care, care, encourage folks to watch the quote, how to survive an encounter with the police officer video. Uh, and here's the link. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, and what's on the link? Uh, it's a it's a, about a two hour video. And what does it say? Does what it does say, the video say? Does it say? What does it say? Well, I mean, it says a lot of stuff, Judge. I mean, okay, it, so it, what? It, what part of these do you want to introduce? Just the fact that? Well, no, no, no. I, I just wanted to uh, uh, introduce uh, the fact that he had that on his website, Judge. That's it. I don't want to how show to survive the video an encounter with the police. How to how to survive an encounter with the police? This and video. Then, I'm I'm sorry. Go ahead. This video was never provided in discovery. I've never seen this video. Um, it's my understanding this might be a link to an ACLU video um, right. that was posted on his okay. site. Okay. Stegmar, you got any comment? I mean, uh, just the same thing. How, how to survive an encounter with the police. I mean, yeah, I can tell my clients how to do that all the time. You don't say anything, you don't do anything except provide your information, follow their commands, and that's, that's all you do. I mean, that's how, you know, it could be anything. <laughs> you okay. don't want to confuse the okay. jury. And there's two, uh, and uh, Mr. Price, I, I don't think either one of them are relevant. And, if the, and whatever relevance they might have is going to be outweighed by whatever their value is. I don't want to get into trying the case about whatever the problem is that Mr. Masters had with the Warsaw police officer. <clears throat> I mean, I really just don't want to get into that. I don't want to, I, you know, I think we have all the information we need if you really want to know the truth. And then how to survive in a police encounter. You know, that could be very benign. If it came from the ACLU, 
I would say that that's probably very benign. I'm sure it didn't say, you know, arm yourself with AK-47s or, you know, make sure you take some martial arts training or I don't think that's part of the plan. So I think that we could spend two hours trying to figure out what the, you know, learning what the ACLU instructs you on how to survive an encounter with the police, which is probably good advice for everybody, but I don't want to include it in the trial.